what do you what so. do you think what do you think is a, is gravity I, I just i'm always curious about what gravity is and i, I want to hear your take on what gravity is what is gravity all right so my 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 best theory. we have a lot of different theories and there's almost a problem with too many theories and, and yeah and not enough uh falsifiability or ways to test those theories um there's a couple good ones though like uh antimatter makes it makes anti-gravity um or or that uh it's somehow this this twister effect of, of, of rotating torsion that you're actually you know pulling the space time and compressing the space time through torsion and that you can um, change the you know warp warp space time like that and there mm. but there's other ways the, the best way that I've I've heard the best scheme that I've heard is this uh, idea of um, using trapped light uh, that basically that space time itself is generated by the flow of light and the path of light and the path that life takes. Um, mm. So it, it's sort of uh, this idea that that light is causing the warping and, and, and the, the, the folds in space time um, by the presence of light and by the, the, the paths that it takes and that light itself is actually, it actually is space time, that space time is communicating. It matters communicating through this material we call space time through what we call light. Or photonic interactions, it's the, the, this uh, electromagnetic fields, or waves, or vibrations, yeah. right? Um, so if, if if everything's vibrations, the best uh, the best model that you can say is we take two boats and, and put them in this pond, and then you start vibrating the water, and all those vibrations um, go all over the water. But between the two boats, there's certain vibrations that are damped. And it causes a, a, a weird effect is a net force on them. And they actually will rotate around each other. And eventually, just from the vibration of the waves in the water, these random vibrations in the water, the boats will actually come together and then stick together and, and stick together. Um, and that's sort of the best theory I've seen for, for what gravity is, is that it's this, this as the what we call the ether, um, the electromagnetic, not luminiferous ether, but uh, the whatever, the jelly of uh, electromagnetic uh, vibrations that hold the, everything together um, will actually, ca actually cause gravity. It, causes, it creates the space-time, and it, and it causes the ripples in space-time, which create gravity. And that if we can bend that light and cause uh, distortions in that light and the way that light interacts with everything in our mass through these, these, these surface shells, these optical materials on the hull of the craft, um, which trap light and bend light, um, which is some of these more advanced materials that I've been talking about for the past 10 years. And then I finally get vindicated when we get unclassified reports showing that, yes, the military, you know, these, these secret programs have been researching um, spin glasses. They have been researching metallic glass. They have been researching these types of materials that we use, we can use to readily in the optical crystals, quasi crystals, metamaterials, those types that are of able that are, I'm sorry, to, that are able to bend light. They're able to trap and bend light. Um, wow. And, and um, this is, this is almost leading into what would be considered warp drive then. Right. I mean, if, yeah, if that's yeah, the this case, is like essentially warp drive and the way that I, I believe that there's, we're going to have a guy on who's, who's, I've got a whole bunch of questions to ask. He's coming on this weekend. He's author of this book behind me right here. Let me, let me grab it real quick. One sure, second. sure. Cool. Cause this really, um, opened up a lot of doors. This book was published, I think, uh, 2008, 2009. Um, let me just check. This is the, the name of it. Paul Lavayette, Violet, yeah, Violet. Paul. The Violet, yes. The uh, Violet, Secrets of Anti-Gravity Propulsion. Cool. That right. seems like a cool book. This is a very, very cool book, and I am so curious. It's chapter 8 and chapter 7 um, and chapter 6. Chapter 6, 7, and 8. Uh, chapter 6 is Gravity Beam Propulsion. Um, chapter 7 is Project Sky Vault. And chapter 8 is Microwave Phase Conjugation. And those three things, I really, I know that he didn't, he didn't like come up with this himself. I don't, no. I, I mean, maybe he did, but damn, like we need to know, I need to know who his source was. I've never yeah. found, I can't find anything on this except for what he has in his book. And it's led me to accept, well, I found, I started finding more stuff once I found a couple of the other scientists' names involved. One was a guy named Lake Marabou. It's L-E-I-K-M-Y-R-A-B-O. 
Okay. And um, he worked for NASA as, as a scientist and um, was working on this thing called light craft technology. And um, they use a scheme called four-wave mixing. Um, it's FWM or four-wave mixing. Okay. And um, with these tr certain types of optical crystals, they can use four-wave mixing to change the speed of light in the, or the refractive index in these materials. Um, and if you can make that refractive index negative, you can actually, you know, create these invisibility cloaks. Um, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. I thought you, I thought the speed of light is not changeable. It's constant, right? It, well, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's actually, um, you can change, it's, cha it's constant to all observers. That's what, that's what the law of relativity okay. says ah. to all. It's constant to all observers, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's constant. It has to, so, so there's the difference between what's called phase um, velocity and group velocity. And so the group velocity is always constant. It's always C, but okay. the phase velocity can actually change. Hmm. So if you get the phase velocity to change, you can get it to go faster than the speed of light so that it goes into this material. It travels through that material and around your, uh, and, and outside around the craft and uh, to the next, right outside so it makes you invisible to any light that comes in and hits your craft and um if you can become invisible to light i think you might be able to become invisible to gravity because i really believe that the the photon is the carrier force particle for the graviton like hmm. i said like that the, the gravi graviton exists if it's not uh, there's no graviton we haven't found a graviton because the graviton is this this sort of rippling motion of the electromagnetic medium that is in space and okay. that those little subtle fluctuations, there's more of them between us and the earth because there's lots of photons and electromagnetic interaction between us and what's underneath us because there's a big giant earth underneath us with lots kind of atoms of, in it. That, yeah, that's kind of what I believe as far as what gravity is. It's more of like earth is a battery in a sense, got the north and the south pole, and then we are, ourselves are batteries and every everything has like a, a, a natural magnetism, you know, that we're... We, are held held down to the earth because it's got you know a pole now it's you if that was true though the north and south pole if you go to antarctica it would we would propel ourselves away right <laughs> because we have like a you know well, north, it's not south, it's not south, quite north. like i wouldn't say no. it's quite like magnetism um no. it's more like a distortion of the actual time of, of time itself um hmm. if you look at it there's a whole bunch of new videos that were put out uh, pbs space time is a great physics channel um, on YouTube that I watch uh, a lot of their physics videos. He's got two recent videos on gravity, which talk about this time element. And um, and I was just like, this is exactly, you know, it's it's saying what I'm saying, but in a different kind of a different way, because um, it, it, it again, it's this it's this interaction. If you take a photon in a box and bounce that, this is how they make an atomic clock is they take a photon and bounce in, in a box and they measure how, how fast it, you know, every time it bounces and hits the ceiling is one, one time interval, you know? And, um, if you get a whole bunch of these photons, uh, going simultaneously, you can actually, it, it actually like changes that time interval slightly to the other observer, to other observers and be elsewhere because it's so much noise going on. And that time distortion actually changes is, is what like warps. It's we're not warping space. It's warping space time, but it's warping the the time component of space time, hmm. so that we fall downwards. It's 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 sort of weird. It's it, it's a lot to wrap your head around and stuff. But m what I'm mainly concerned is is how do we just how do we turn it off? How do we figure out a way to turn it off? You know. So once it's turned on and we start going, pew, how do, how do we stop it? Is that what you mean? We talk, yeah, and no, 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 I don't know how to, I don't care how to stop it. I just want to learn how to turn it on, and I'm not going to be inside the thing when I try it. That's going to be a drone <laughs> first, for, first. Of course, off, but, of course, like Starship uh, SN10. Right. Oh, it almost made it. Um, one thing I wanted to be, go, go backtrack a little bit. We talked about this, sure. this conferences, right? So yeah. what we ended up doing is we ended up taking the, the, like going through all those conferences and I've accumulated lists of all these scientists, like I said, you know, over mm -hmm. the years, I've, mm -hmm. I got a list of everyone who's ever worked on this stuff and their email. And so a lot of them I've reached out and, and contacted and asked questions and, 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 and started a dialogue with these people, which is even cooler. And, um, so eventually we got to this point a couple of years ago, we said, we, we all, we were all talking and we like said, why don't we have, we don't. We went to the Estes Park Conference uh, last year is what happened. And um, Estes Park Conference is put on by a guy named, a scientist named Dr. Jim Woodward. And it was famous for the Woodward effect. And uh, 
so we we invited all the attendees to our own conference and we just started our own conference and and uh, instead of having it once a year we we have them like almost weekly or bi-weekly now and um this is speeding because the the process of scientific advancement is is like speeding up it's been slow it's been too slow and sluggish for years because it's gone through this process these meetings once a year or, or, or for these specialized fields and if we can have them on the internet through zoom conferences it, it it's way less expensive than flying everyone out to the go to the, the conference True. and we can have them you know every week so we kind of started our own conference we did we did i um uh i Tim Ventura, actually, we, we, we were trying to figure the per perfect person to run it. And Tim Ventura kind of has already done, been doing this kind of stuff. And so we just wanted to like basically link up with him and, and start getting him better people, um, trying to find the best sources out there. And, you know, we, we don't, no, I'm saying all the sources that we have are the best sources, uh, so far, you know, it is, but, um, we're, we're trying our best to like up, up the game constantly and get better, better people on. Of course, when you have a conference like this, there's going to be people that sneak their way in and, and, um, and also, you know, people on the bad side that get, that get their way in that, that are trying to sabotage you and stuff. Of course. But this weekend should be awesome. We're having Paula Violette on. Oh, who's cool. The author of this book. He's yeah, going to yeah. be presenting. So we're going to get to ask him questions firsthand, you know, like, yeah. where the heck did you get this information like, who's your source <laughs> yes like who told you about this like yeah yeah for real um and also um we're gonna have a guy named mike mcculloch on from uh plymouth university who's doing the m drive stuff with darpa oh cool and he's, he's uh his website is called quantized inertia.com and you can check him out on uh on that site and read some of his papers if you're interested in the physics and, and some of this stuff and, where can people um, watch this? Where 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 is this going to be? This conference that you're doing? It's going to be on Alien Scientists YouTube on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and right. um, I'll be broadcasting it then. Um, so tune in live there. You could probably also get it. Um, no, just come to Alien Scientists. Uh, it's and and watch it there. And um, if you have anyone that has any questions and stuff, this one's going to be, this is like the best lineup. We've, uh, one of the best, line, I, I, one of the best lineups we've had so far, probably the best, just, I've been dying to talk to Paul Laviolette and ask this guy questions. And his book was phenomenal and way ahead of its time. It's almost, you know, it was 2008. So yeah, that's my YouTube channel. There's a video on there about how to make a real working magic wand. Oh, um, that's that cool. Electrolyze, elect, you know, don't be careful with that. You know, the retina is only a couple of cells thick and, uh, if you burn out your rods and cones, they do not come back. So don't, you know, don't blind yourself with making right. this sort of stuff. Right on, right on. 